No, I know we're supposed to be talking about episode seven, but I gotta say, I feel like I kind of have more of like an episode two Obi Wan Kenobi Ewan McGregor vibe going right now. I'm serious, look at this. I'm like a jet. Okay, now I'm an emperor. Howdy, everybody. I'm David Geisler. This is the Technophiles Newscast, and I know we're supposed to be on spring break right now, but I tell you what. There's something we just can't not talk about. And that's the very realistic technology behind seemingly unrealistic Star Wars droids. I know, I'm basically preaching to the choir here, but last week was the Star Wars celebration in Anaheim, California. Now, at said celebration, uh, the newest teaser trailer was revealed. Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, J.J. Abrams, Kathleen Kennedy were all there. But also everybody's favorite new android, BB-8, made a very in-the-flesh appearance. Now, if you've seen any of the Star Wars teaser trailers, you'll absolutely remember a very specific droid, basically a sphere with a head on top rolling around. This little guy got everybody's attention because, frankly, everyone assumed that he was CGI until J.J. Abrams a few months ago said, no, he's he's a real robot. Going into pre-production, Lucasfilm did admit that they wanted to introduce a new droid into the franchise and have it feel very Star Wars, but also have it look and feel like something that uh, is completely new, something people hadn't seen before. I mean, it's a cool look. That head looks like it's defying physics, but also it feels very earthly and very real. On stage, when BB-8 was rolling around, Kathleen Kennedy pointed out that Bob Iger actually was the man responsible for finding the company that was able to make this robot exist in real life. And that company, led by Paul Barbarian, is Sphero. Now, maybe Sphero sounds a little familiar to you because the company actually named their first product the same name, and it's this little robotic ball that rolls around on its own. Bob Iger was actually involved with some kind of funding program that found new companies to create new tech, and he funded this company, Sphero, without understanding that there might be a connection to the Star Wars thing yet. So you can imagine a scenario where Bob Iger's going to these meetings where this company's making this robot ball that rolls around, and then going to Star Wars meetings where they're saying, if only we had a robot ball robot that rolled around. bb sitting there. Now at the celebration, J.J. Abrams did point out that there was a lot of talk about making BB-8 um, a computer-generated droid, just totally artificial. But he was saying that he really wanted it to be physical there in front of the actors. And so I think Bob Iger kind of just, you know, put one and one together and realized that this Sphero company might be the guys that could pull this off. So the big question that the internet is asking right now, of course, is how does BB-8 actually work? I think we can figure it out by looking at the Sphero robot a bit. Because at least from the outside, it appears that BB-8 is really kind of just a Sphero with a head that floats on top. Okay, so magic floating head on top of a Sphero, how does that happen? Well, first of all, let's take a look at how the Sphero actually works. We know that even though the outside of a Sphero is just a ball, on the inside it's actually quite complicated. There's a series of accelerometers, gyroscopes, there's some rubber wheels on the bottom. The whole thing's weighted down low uh, with counterweights and it can that's how it rolls itself around. These wheels activate in different directions and it's 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 actually it's it actually is kind of a robotic hamster ball. I got to be honest. Fancy plastic robot hamster ball to fancy plastic robot hamster ball with a head on top. How do we get to that point? We've looked at some of the other theories that are out there. There's one that seemed pretty interesting that proposed that maybe the, the head of BB-8 actually was the driving force of the whole ball. Very similar to some of those monopod robots that are out there right now. We got a little excited about that idea, but ultimately, this is what we've decided. Okay, so we think that you basically take a Sphero, scale it up, so you've got your um, kind of low weight of gravity inside this crazy hamster ball. You've got a couple rubber wheels that are driving the thing around, and that could be good enough if, if it were just a sphere. But we've still got the head floating on top. This is what we think. We think that there is a rod of some kind going straight up with a hinge on it or something like that um, with magnets. And we think that there's probably magnets on the underside of the head. We think that uh, BB-8's head is super light, probably paper, you know, light as air kind of thing, with some magnets and some ball bearings that rest on top of the ball. Well, that's all well and good, using magnets to go through material, though a great idea is nothing incredibly new. But we think that this is the final kicker. We think that the gyroscopes and the accelerometers that are at the bottom of BB-8 um, almost work like a segue and keep the hardware that's inside the ball stable. That hardware then, with magnets, connects to the head. The reason we think this is when you watch the video where BB-8 is rolling around, he kind of leans a little bit, or when he's looking around, sometimes the bottom wheel will jiggle a little. Now what we think that is, is the inertia of the mechanics inside, moving the head around, are being uh, pushed around a little bit by the accelerometers, and it's the accelerometers just adjusting. So in other words, even though BB-8 appears to be this low-weighted um, sphere that can't fall over, the truth is he's actually 
a Segway <laughs> with, with, with magnets on top. And then just the ball is kind of just this wheel. From what we can tell, we didn't notice any real LEDs on the main sphere. We didn't really notice any lights on his head. If you look at BB-8's main lens, it has some nice layers to it. It looks like it's deep, but he could just be hollow in there. It doesn't really matter. So that's our theory and we're sticking to it. We think that BB-8 is two or three simple technologies that when they get put together and get kind of masked in this puppeteering structure, uh, all come together to make something really pretty interesting. And more importantly, what's really cool about this is that BB-8 is a real robot. He was really on the set. The actors really get to look at him. You could probably give him a little kick if you wanted to, frankly. I mean, he'd probably adjust. One thing that's even cooler than that is that in a subtle way, we're getting into this space in the world where sci-fi robots and real world robots aren't really that far away from each other anymore. Okay guys, that's it. Again, like I said, we feel pretty confident with those ideas. Um, if you agree or disagree with us, be sure to put it in the comments below or tweet us at Technophiles Pod. You can also find us on Facebook by searching Technophiles or go to iTunes and Stitcher uh, by searching Technophiles as well or go to our actual website, technophilespodcast.com to check out this show and our actual podcast, The Technophiles Podcast. I just said Technophiles and Podcast a lot. But I hope you guys have a great week and I hope you think about these awesome robots in episode 7. Okay, see you guys. So what we think it actually might be is a, a sphere filled with snakes and the snakes smell mice on coordinated sides of the set and they kind of shake this mouse over here, alive of course, and the snakes smell it and then steer BB-8 towards that mouse. And if, the, and if BB-8 goes a little too far off the set, they start shaking the other mice. And then the ball rolls that way and the actors, what's really cool about this is the actors can actually react to a ball full of snakes. And I think J.J. Abrams thought that that was probably really important. So it's not snakes, it's, it's something else, you know? I mean, it might be small children.